Welcome to this screencast about body tissues in general, and we'll get an introduction to the different types, and uh, we will focus on epithelial tissue uh, in the next few slides. But to begin, um, the study of tissues, of body tissues, is really important to anatomy and physiology because as well as at the cell level, um, body tissues are, uh, you look at body tissues to indicate the homeostasis, the well-being, freedom from disease of the human body or body systems, as well as looking at um, abnormalities and able to pinpoint or diagnose um, disorders, diseases, etc. from in the human body. So, um, definition of tissues for you, but there are four main types in the human body. That is epithelial tissue, which I refer to or typically is referred to as just epithelium. There's connective tissue, muscle tissue, and nervous tissue. To start with epithelial tissue or epithelium, uh, the locations, they, they really vary throughout the entire body. Um, but the, the main job or the main application that they have or the main place that you would find them is that they are coverers and they are liners. They, they cover the body. For instance, your skin is an epithelium and it lines body cavities. So epithelial tissue kind of acts as a, as, a, as a tarp wood to cover stuff and line things. It's also part of glandular tissue, um, which you will learn more about in a more advanced anatomy and physiology course. But we're just going to cover it in, in uh, its, its main job as a cover and a liner. So because it's a cover or a liner, these functions that it has should be pretty, uh, they should make a lot of sense. Um, we're going to focus on protection, really, and absorption as their main functions. Um, filtration and secretion are probably more apt to be linked with their role in glandular tissue. Here are the main characteristics of epithelium. Um, because they are a liner, because they are a cover, they perform, they, they perform the service of being a boundary. So they have cells that are jam-packed closely together. There's, there's really no space. In fact, some of them even overlap, depending on the type. But they fit very closely together. Remember, they, they form sheets. They form membranes. The apical surface, or apical surface, however you pronounce, want to pronounce it, is also known as a free surface. In other words, it's the edge. Again, since they are a boundary tissue, there's going to be a free surface, which just means it's on, it's on the surface. It's kind of like the free edge of a book is its cover. It's the outside coverer. Um, the lower surface that it that is adhered to that adheres it to other body tissues is called the basement membrane. So you think about basement as being the lower um, portion of a house, basement membrane, the lower surface. These are just characteristics of the tissue itself. Because they really are on the edge of things, um, they are avascular. They don't have a blood supply. Everything needs to um, get to those cells by diffusion and osmosis. They need to travel from a, a few cell layers below to the blood supply and, and diffuse and, and uh, by osmosis move across cell membranes to get there. So this diagram just shows you um, with epithelium shows you the difference between the apical surface which is the again the free edge there's nothing out here but space think about your skin think about this being as a actually the bottom one would be more accurate but think about this being as the layers of your skin there's the edge so this is just space outside of the body space and the basal surface or the basement membrane would be found right there um, this one we'll find out a little bit later. This is a single layer. Obviously, here's multi-layered epithelium. There's three main shapes of the cells. Uh, squamous or squamous cells. They're flat. Squam or squam means scale, scale-like. So fish scales, they kind of overlap themselves like, um, like roof shingles would as well. Cuboidal, um, they aren't truly square. I mean, you find very few actual 90 degree angles like that in cells, um, but these are just kind of cartoon drawings. And columnar, these are shaped like a cube, 
These are shaped like a column. So one type of them being simple squamous. Um, a single layer of cells, as you can see here, this is actually the free surface right in here. Now it's not to the outside of the body, but that's still a free surface there. It's still a free surface here. Um, these are actually pictures of the little alveoli, the little air sacs in the lungs. Um, so this would actually just be space where you would breathe in or breathe out um, carbon dioxide and oxygen. But those are just flat, single layers of cells. Another type, again, simple, cuboidal. Um, simple, again, just means that it is a single layer, a, sim a single layer of the cells. Cuboidal, cube-like cells. Um, the locations really aren't so important for us at, at this point. Um, our main objective is to be able to look and uh, see, identify what normal cells are going to look like. So here is a photomicrograph of cuboidal shaped cells. What they really kind of look like is, um, I think of, of, uh, of marshmallows kind of jam packed together. So again, they aren't true cubes like, like dice would be. Um, they really aren't these right angles. But what you're looking at is kind of a cross section of, of tubes. If you could imagine um, holding a whole handful of straws and looking from one end out the other, that's, that's really what you're looking at is a cross section here. So the free surface is actually inside of this. Where you see the bright light, all that is is really a free surface. And it's a single layer of these kind of marshmallow shaped cells that are jam packed together in a ring. Um, but a cubal, cuboidal cell is going to look um, about as tall as it is thick. The simple columnar, single layer of the tall column shaped cells. Um, these are maybe a little more prevalent in the human body. Um, they're found all over the place. One place that they would be found is lining the digestive tract. And, um, and they could often be ciliated. Ciliated means they have these little hair-like projections that often are able to kind of um, catch debris, propel the mucus that is produced by things called goblet cells um, or, or reproductive cells if you're talking about the reproductive tract. So here's another picture of them. If you can see the basement membrane right here, and you can see that these cells are definitely taller than they are wide. Um, so this is a picture of epithelium surrounding, or I should say lining, the digestive tract. So you can see the free surface up here. The free surface is up here, that bright space. And then here are the columnar cells. These special cells called goblet cells, they produce and secrete mucus right to the surface of that tissue layer. Kind of an interesting type of epithelium is called pseudo-stratified. Pseudo, you know, you know, means false, and stratified means many layers. And so it gives, they actually give a false appearance of being stratified, and you'll see it in a second when you look at the picture. But they look like they're uh, many layers, but it's actually a single layer of cells. The primary location of pseudostratified cells or, or epithelium uh, lines the di or, or excuse me the lines the respiratory tract, and so it's often ciliated. You think about that in your respiratory tract, and there's plenty of uh, goblet cells that you would find um, secreting mucus to the surface. But really, these are mostly caught um, used for catching debris. So if you think about that, when you if you breathe something in, it might be a bacterium or a virus. Um, or even anything else, some little dust particle. And uh, if it's severe of a stimulus enough, it might actually stimulate a coughing reflex out of your re respiratory tract. But um, So you see the cilia quite visible here. And it gives the appearance, again, you see all the nuclei at different levels. It looks like it's stratified. It looks like they are more than one layer, but it's actually one layer of cells. As you can see them, they kind of look like... Um, kind of flame or spindle shaped cells um, in, in uh, two different directions, both spindle towards the top or maybe spindle towards the bottom. 
the only stratified type of tissue that is common in the body and one that we need to be aware of and be able to identify is the stratified squamous cells. Stratified squamous epithelium, uh, the reason it's so important is that it is, it, uh, is what makes up the skin. Now, there's a special type of the stratified epithelium that makes up the skin, but it's a bunch of flat cells that are jam-packed on top of one another to make kind of a thick tissue layer. Um, but it is, the, it is actually the outside layer of your skin that you see that's epithelium. It also lines the mouth and lines the esophagus um, in, with multiple layered squamous cells. So here's a type. This isn't actually the skin. Um, arguably, if you think about the skin that is inside of body cavities, um, that's what it would be, lining your mouth and lining your throat. This is what it looks like. See all of these multi-layers of cells, the basement membrane being down here, the free surface at the edge, because here's the free, here's free space, but there's all these layers. This is actually down here where the new cells um, by cell division are produced, and as they produce more cells, you push the old ones out, and eventually the outside layer is going to slough off. They're going to, that's, that's what you call when they, they kind of break free of the surface. And, you know, that's part of what um, becomes part of the mucus or part of uh, the good old stuff that you can hock up, especially when you get a cold and these cells are um, infected by a virus. They fall off and they gather in your throat. Sometimes they produce a coughing reflex and Sometimes when you cough something, you get that nice, nasty material in your throat. But these are many layers of these cells. If you think about this being the surface of the skin, this outer layer would look much different, but this is essentially what your skin looks like on the microscopic level as well. Another type we won't spend a whole lot with, but it's called transitional epithelium. The reason it's transitional is that you can actually, it will actually change shape. Um, it really essentially lines your bladder. And if your bladder gets full, the tissue is allowed to stretch and these things will flatten, but that allows your bladder to, to uh, accumulate urine. So here's a picture of transitional tissue. Again, free surface, free space, and the basement membrane you look at these, you look at the edge of this, they're very rounded. Um, it's one of my favorite words the book uses, they call this a bulbous appearance. But the, the tissue is going to change shape as it stretches, as it would stretch, these would actually flatten out and it would actually look more like stratified squamous tissue.